I don't know what that was. Um, all right, so we're in section 7.1 slash 7.2. All right, let's get started, folks. We're gonna we're combining two sections because they, they, they're, they're pretty easy and they go together. Um, systems of equations. So what do, we've, we've used systems of equations before. When we, when, when we talk about systems of equations, what, what are we talking about? Could be two. Let's, let's make it a little, little more general. Yeah? Two or more, or, or just more, more than one, right? So let's say two or more equations. And we'll have two or more, or two or more variables. Today, we're going to talk about two variable systems. And we're going to, we're going to talk about three, three methods of solution. And just, just to be clear, so we're all on the same page, um, when we're solving a two-variable system, we're looking for our solution is an ordered pair x, y. That, that makes both equations true, so that works in both equations. And I'm just going to use E, Q, N. All right, so our three methods. The first one, our first method of substitution or sorry, first method is substitution. Sometimes we use fancy words in math to describe things, and other times we use pretty straightforward words. This is a pretty straightforward <coughs> description. Substitution means we solve one equation, for a variable, and substitute into the other equation. <clears throat> All right, and we've 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 worked with with these these systems of equations here and there, and usually what happens is we've described the problem and then Suddenly, we would say, "Oh, it's we have to solve it by substitution." Um, oh, it's a, it's a system of equations. So I just want to go through a couple of examples of using substitution. Um, so let's say we have a system x plus y equals five, and x minus y equals three. Now this one definitely would be easier to solve by elimination but I want to talk about substitution first. So we're going to use substitution. So we can solve either equation for either variable. When I look at this, I would say if I'm going to use substitution, I just add y to both sides. So x equals y plus 3. And then we're going to take that and substitute it right there for x. So I get y plus 3 plus y equals 5. So 2y equals 2 and y equals 1. And then we're going to plug y equals 1 into either equation. So 
So I can plug it into either one of these to see that x equals 4. I read about a, a teacher once that didn't let the students say plug and chug. They had to say substitute and chug because plug means substitute. So we plug in to see that x equals 4. So our solution is the point 4, 1. Um, so let's think about this geometrically for a second. If we graphed this equation, x plus y equals 5, what kind of, what kind of graph would that be? I could rewrite this as y equals negative x plus 5. That's a line. And this one I could write y equals x minus 3, another line. So geometrically, what we're talking about here is finding out where two lines intersect. That's what, that's what, how we could interpret this solving this system of equations. We want to find the point where these two lines intersect. What if we had something like this? x squared plus y squared equals 5, and x plus y equals 1. And that's our system. To show that we have a system of equations, we use these, this one, one brace on the one side. Well, let's, before, we, before we start working on this, if we graph x squared plus y squared equals 5, what would that be? That's a circle. So the center is at 0, 0, and the, the radius is square root of 5. And x plus y equals 1, that's a line. So solving this system of equations is the same as saying we want to find out where this line intersects this circle. Well, what kind of possibilities do we have? We could, that line could intersect that circle in how many points? Two, right? Or one, it could be tangent, or none at all. It might not intersect the circle at all. So we have, we have those possibilities. Um, I'm going to solve the linear equation. I'm going to say that um, x equals 1 minus y. I could solve for, for y also, it doesn't matter. But now I'm going to take this and plug it in right there for x. And I get 1 minus y squared plus y squared equals 5. And now I need to multiply this out, so I get 1 minus 2y plus y squared plus y squared equals 5. Well, what kind of equation am I going to get here? We have a quadratic. We have a y squared and a y. So we know that when we have a quadratic, we want to get everything on one side of the equation. We want to get it equal to 0. So I'm going to write that as 2y squared minus 2y e uh, minus 4 equals 0. So subtract 5 from both sides. And I can take. Yeah. I figure it out. Um, and I could do one more thing to make that look a little nicer before I, before I go move on. What can I do? We can divide everything by 2. So I divide everything by 2. I get y squared. It's always nice when that coefficient, leading coefficient, is 1. We could factor the other way as well or use a quadratic formula. But this one, this one should factor. We get a y and a y. And that equals 0. We have to have a 2 and a 1. And it's going to have to be a minus and a plus. right? So this tells us y equals negative 1 or y equals 2. I can plug in. And when y equals negative 1, I get that x equals um, 2. And when y equals 2, x equals negative 1. So my solutions are the points 2, negative 1, and negative 1, 2, the points. So that particular line intersects that circle in two points. All right.
questions there? All right, the second method that we're going to use to solve systems of equations is solve by graphing. And we've done this a little bit in homework problems in the past. Usually, when you solve by graphing, you're looking at equations. They tend to be equations that are not real nice. So you would have something like y equals cosine x minus 1 over x plus 5 and y equals inverse tangent of x minus e to the x plus 7. Those are not very nice equations. Well, not, not that they're not nice. They're, they're, all equations are nice. They're just kind of messy. And it would be, you wouldn't be able to solve these by substitution or elimination because you can't really... <coughs> It, setting these two equally, you, it, there's not really much you can do algebraically. So when we solve by graphing, what we're doing is we get our equations in y equals form. We put it in the calculator. So this would go in my y1, this would go in my y2. You graph them, and you use your calculator to find the intersection. So you might have to play with the window or something, but you should see that the graphs cross somewhere, and then you can use that second trace, and then you have the option to find the intersect to find where they find where they intersect. I, I don't even know if these would intersect probably do, but I just made them up off the top of my head. And sometimes, solving by graphing, we call that solving numerically, is the only way to solve a system of equations. These are kind of messy equations, probably have to solve them numerically. And computers are good at doing that kind of thing. Computers are good at doing all of this stuff. And that's part of the reason we learn how to do it, is so that we can tell computers how to do it. All right, and our third method is elimination. And elimination is usually for nice equations. And by nice, I, I mean not messy. And when we use elimination, what we want to do, the, 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 the idea is to add or subtract. I'm going to put in parentheses. If we, if we add, then we, it's, it's easier to avoid arithmetic errors. But we can add or subtract equations. to eliminate a variable. And when you can solve a system by elimination, usually it's a little bit less work than solving by substitution. So let's look at a couple of examples of elimination. So 2x minus 3y equals 7. And 5x plus 3y equals 0. Now, substitution will always work. Elimination will always work. Often, there's one way that's, that's a little easier than the other. So what can we do here to, to get rid of one of the variables? Just add these two together. Add those together. So 2x plus 5x, I get 7x. Negative 3y plus 3y, 0y. And that equals 7. And that tells me that x equals 1. And then I plug in. I can plug it into either one of the equations. And you see, in this case, that y equals 
negative 5 thirds. So if you did substitution, you'd probably end up working with fractions, which math students don't like to do. So the solution to this would be the point 0.1, negative 5 thirds. All right, we good there? OK, what if we had this equation or this system? So there's my system of equations. So this one isn't set up real nice like that first one. So what do we have to do here? Multiply the second one. Second one. So we can multiply this. I'm just going to put times negative 2. Multiply that by negative 2. Now I'm just going to, I'm going to write out the new system. You don't have necessarily have to write it out. So that gives us our new system of equations would then be 3x plus 4y equals 11 and negative 2x minus 4y equals negative 10. And now we can add these two together. And I get x equals 1 when I add those two equations together. That's really nice. And I plug in, and I see that y equals 2. So my solution is the point 1, 2. When you can use elimination, usually it's pretty nice. Yeah? Um, you're going to plug the x equals 1 into the second equation. Do you do it from the original one or after you multiply by negative 2? All right, that's a good question. So Jack asks, if I plug in x equals 1, do I plug it into the original or the, the second one? It doesn't matter. P plug, I would say plug it into the whichever one's going to be the easiest to calculate. But it, you'll get the same answer either way. All right, um, let's look at one more. What if we had the system 2x minus 3y equals negative 15 and uh, x, or f sorry, 5x plus 2y equals 10. That's our system. Well, now we don't have a... a, a, a situation where multiplying one or the other equation by a number gives us something in the other equation. So what do we, what do, we do here? Multiply, multiply both. both. We, can, we can multiply both by something that gives us a nice result. So what, what would we want to multiply by? We can multiply the top. How about since they're both the same signs, how about we multiply by positive? Multiply by 2 and multiply by 3, since these are different signs. Uh, not plus 3, but times 3. So my new system would then be, and the reason that I'm writing out the new system is that it's going to be convenient for when we talk about three variable systems. So we get 4x minus 6y equals negative 30. And 15x plus 6y equals positive 30. Now I can add. That was the, the, the point is to get to where we could add them together. And I get 19x equals 0. Divide by 19, and that tells me that x equals 0. Plug in. And we get that y equals um, 5. And I can plug it into any of these equations, plug it into the one that's easy to calculate. So my solution is 0, 5. All right, questions? The most common mistake in systems of equations is arithmetic errors. 
it's very easy to make arithmetic errors. Let's talk about the geometry of what of what this what these situations are describing for a second. And here we're talking about a linear for a linear system only. So I'm going to draw, we have three possibilities. So I'm going to draw three sets of axes. And we decided that when we have a, a linear system, two variables, two unknowns, linear system, that we were finding the way or finding the points where these lines intersected. So what's one possibility? Well, we know from geometry that two lines intersect. How? What kind of geometric thing happens when two do we get when we two lines intersect? A point. So we could get our two lines intersecting like that, and we get one solution. That was, that was, that's one of the axioms in geometry, the two lines intersect at a point. What's another possibility, geometrically? The, their two lines are parallel. They don't intersect at all. So we get no solution. The lines are parallel. If we solved, went through our process and solved our system of equations, how would we tell that we have no solution? Yeah? So if you, if you solve for one and you, you plug in and it doesn't work, usually when you have a linear system, it's, pretty, it's a easy, really easy to tell. Anybody remember what happens in that case? You get something like, like 1 equals 0. So you go through your process, substitution, elimination, you get everything, and you end up with 1 equals 0, 5 equals 10, something like that. And you think to yourself, well, well when does 1 equal 0? Never. So that tells me that there's no solution. And we, when someone mentioned a, a third possibility, what's the third possibility? They're the same line. They're just different the equation for the line written in, uh, in different ways. So we have the same line. How many solutions do we get here? Infinite number of solutions. So all the points that are on that line would be, a, would be solutions to that system of equations. Now I want to I mention one thing. This doesn't mean that infinity is the solution. It just means we get an infinite number of them. And it, it, we need to be care careful because sometimes students like to say all real numbers are solutions. Well, yes, all real numbers, all you can any real number x and any real number y are solutions, but they only happen for the pairs that are on that line. So just to, to be the most accurate, we're going to say an infinite number of solutions. Same line. How do you t know that uh, if you solve your system of equations, you go through the process, how do you know that you get an infinite number of solutions? Yeah? You get something like, One equals one, zero equals zero, five equals five, something like that. And you say to yourself, well, when does one equal one? Always. Always. 
So you get an infinite number of solutions. Systems with at least one solution are consistent. Systems with no solution are called inconsistent. So just another way to classify systems. Systems can be consistent or, or inconsistent. All right, so before we leave this, the, this idea of geometry, it's always nice when we can combine geometry and algebra, geometry and other stuff. Geometry is usually the, the top, the subject that students want to forget, but it turns out that it's one that's, that is really important. So if a two-variable system, two-variable linear system, if in that situation we're looking for where two lines intersect, what are you going to guess if we have a three variable linear system? 3x plus 5y plus 4z equals 7, and we have three equations like that. What do you guess that that's going to represent? Well, what kind of three dimensional object is linear? With no curves, flat. A plane. So three, a three-variable system, when we're solving a three-variable system, we're looking for where three planes intersect. That's what solving a three-variable system is geometrically. All right. The last thing I want to do for today is I want to set up a word problem because students sometimes struggle with these kinds of problems. All right, so we have $10,000 to invest in two funds. And th these funds just pay simple interest. Um, one at 8% and one at 6%. So, and just in general, if you can find a, a fund, a 6% and an 8% fund, you, and you can invest your money in those, you should, because that's pretty good. It's math, math problems tend to be very contrived, and an 8% and 6% fund are pretty contrived these days. Um, we want to earn... $720 in interest. So the question is, how much in each fund? So the fact that we have two funds and we have two dollar amounts there should be a hint that we're talking about some kind of system of equations. We're going to need to write two equations since we have two, two unknown quantities. Our unknown quantities are how much are in each fund. So we're going to have to set up a system. We're going to translate these, this, these, this, these words into a system of equations. So let's let x equal the amount in the 8% fund. And y equal the amount in the 6% fund. So those are our two variables. Our first equation. 
What's the total amount of money we have to invest? 10,000. So that tells us that x plus y equals 10,000. And we want to earn $720 in interest. So we're going to have to have something that equals $720. So for simple interest, how do we calculate simple interest that we get on something? Simple interest is like when you calculate your tax. So that x, x is going to earn 8%. So how do we write that? Point, point oh eight x percent means per 100 plus point zero six y equals 720. And that's our system of equations. So we can use substitution or elimination. And looking at this system, what would you guess, or what would your intuition tell you would be the easiest way to do it? Probably substitution would be easier here. Now, what could I do? What could I do to this system to make it, maybe make it a little easier to do elimination? Mul multiply this bottom one by 100. I get 8x plus 6y equals 720. And there we multiply by 100. And now this, this wouldn't be bad for doing um, elimination. Multiply the top one by negative 6. That wouldn't be too hard. Um, so solve, solve one way or the other. Uh, and if you do that process, you'd get that x equals 6,000 and y equals 4,000. And when you do these kinds of problems, easy way to check, add those two together and make sure they add to 10,000. And for all of these problems, you can always check your answer by plugging your answer into one of the equations and making sure it works. All right, questions? OK. So the homework is on two pages. The first section is uh, the substitution, I think, in the graphing part. And the other is elimination. There's that. 